In a highly critical review of John Updike's last novel, David Foster Wallace uh, asked some of his friends for reactions to, you know, John Updike and who they thought he was, and he quoted them in that review. And one of the most famous of those quotes that he got was that Updike was just a penis with a thesaurus. Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to what I hope is going to be a really quick video uh, just kind of asking the question and opening up to you a discussion about John Updike uh, and his work. This is not an attempt to resuscitate Updike's career or reputation or you know in any way defend John Updike. I have really mixed feelings about Updike as an author uh, and about Updike's uh, works. Uh, but I do think it's interesting how somebody who you know for a lot of my life, up until his death in 2009, was really one of these major figures in American literary circles. You know, he published dozens of novels, he published short stories, he published poetry, he published essays, he did, he wrote criticism of books and movies, and he was that kind of like public intellectual uh, that people went to, you know, when they wanted a good quote or they wanted, you know, a, a snappy review. And yet, when he died in 2009, it seems to me like he and his work more or less uh, just disappeared, uh, which I find to be strange, and it makes me wonder, you know, about all those authors in the past who something similar has happened to, and those authors who maybe we think of as being, you know, fixtures in the literary world today, and what might happen to them in the future, because, you know, nobody was more a fixture in American literature than John Updike in the 1960s, 70s, uh, and 80s. He was an incredibly prolific writer. Um, Probably his most famous books are the Rabbit books, Rabbit at Run, Rabbit Redux, Rabbit is Rich, and Rabbit at Rest, where we follow a character named Rabbit Harry Angstrom uh, as he struggles with tragedy in his personal life, as he struggles with divorce, uh, as he achieves some kind of success uh, and wealth, I believe as a car dealer, and then as he's later in life, as he begins to decline and retire and all those kinds of things. And I think Rabbit is uh, a pretty, you know, uh, foundational American character from that that time period. The books, to me, vary greatly in quality. I think Rabbit Run uh, is, is a good book, uh, and certainly I think a book worthy of being read. Uh, but the thing that I think that, that gets, you know, Updike in trouble today is that Updike is lumped in with, you know, a group of writers, male writers of the 50s, 60s, and 70s who are referred to as the mid-century misogynists. Uh, people like Norman Mailer, uh, Philip Roth are oftentimes lumped in this group, and, you know, Updike as well. And this is because a lot of their books, and a lot of their characters center, or a lot of their books center on male characters who do seem to be, uh, you know, disproportionately interested and obsessed with sex or with their own, you know, genitals. That does seem to be the case. So, you know, there is a lot of discussion of sex in the Rabbit books. Uh, in addition to the Rabbit books, I've read um, S, uh, in which I believe a woman is, gets involved in a cult and there's lots of sex. I've read Month of Sundays, uh, which involves a preacher, I believe, and there's lots of sex. I've read um, Witch of Eastwick, which is kind of a, you know, a witches and demon devil story, and there's, you know, lots of sex. I've read uh, Beck, a book, and Beck is Back, which are about a uh, literature professional, I believe, and there is, you know, lots of, at least thinking about sex in those books. And I've read uh, In the Beauty of the Lilies, which is kind of Updike's multi-generational saga of a family from, I believe, Patterson, New Jersey, which may be the book that is the least about sex. But one of the things that, that I think hurts Updike's reputation uh, and maybe justifiably so, is that what we remember about his books and what we remember about him is he wrote about sex. Other than that, you know, oftentimes his books seem to be largely forgettable. Now, having said all that, I don't want to give you the idea that his books are, you know, anything a close to pornography or anything close to erotica. They're not. It's, you know, they're fairly serious books looking at, you know, white middle class men and their lives and particularly their lives as it seems to uh, center on and, you know, be surrounded by sex. So one of the things I think is, is interesting and, and Updike in this group of mid-century uh, misogynists is why is this true? Why does there seem to be in Updike's book and Updike seem to be obsessed with sex? Why is his male character so, why are his male characters 
so obsessed with sex. And I think it has to do with the time period. And this is one reason why I think Updike is interesting, maybe as his, maybe historically, uh, as much as he might be literarily. Is that a word? Uh, because he was writing at a time in which, for the first time, uh, discussions and writing about sex were considered to be okay, the taboo was lifted, and he was writing uh, for a largely white middle-class audience about white middle-class people and their struggles and their sex lives. And I think that was interesting, and I think people assumed that there was depth in that, and they, they saw themselves, they felt, you know, some kind of... Uh, ability to relate to that and that that may be why he was so popular and why he gained this great reputation. Now having said that, I, I'll tell you, I, I think Updike wrote well. I think he was a good writer, a humorous writer. I think he could craft really lovely sentences. But as I said before, the plots of most of his books are largely forgettable. You know, I lumped, when I was discussing the rabbit books, I lumped four books together in just a few sentences to give you, you know, kind of what the plot breakdown was, what the major plot points were. That means that there isn't a lot of the details there that are memorable, and oftentimes the details that are memorable are just the amount of sex that's taking place. Anyway, this is just kind of a real quick, you know, question of what happened to John, Up John Updike. If you've read Updike, if you have opinions about Updike, love to see those in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.